Hello, this is Virtuals Chess Noob learning and having fun with chess. Another day, another Sicilian, and another day with mayhem in the Mora. That's the name of a book that was recommended to me by a fellow YouTuber, uh, Chess is Best with Stacia Melinda. And this is the book by Mark Esserman, Mayhem in the Mora. And in it is a cracking quote in the foreword by former US uh, three-time champion Grandmaster Larry Christensen. In it, he says that Esserman has convinced hardcore skeptics. He has refuted many a refutation. He has forced many opponents to spend countless hours preparing for the dreaded thing. Many formerly proud acceptors have become meek, snivelling decliners when faced with Esselman's dreaded 3C3. And he writes further that, you know, answering the gambit with a beta reply, so a declination, is a significant psychological victory for White by move 3. Now with that statement, how can you not love the smith Mora gambit, which is what I played in this game. I had the white pieces, of course, started with e4 and c5. Sicilian defense, whoops, d4, uh, and captures, and now 3c3. Did my opponent accept? No, they opted to do the push variation. Capture back with bishop development, and it's happy days. Basically, you're, um, you're basically quite a bit ahead. This is about plus 0 0.8. Uh, and there is a bit of a psychological victory for the play of the smith Mora gambit in this position. Black now decides to push uh, their knight. That's a straight-up mistake, actually, because you can attack that knight with uh, e5. Um, however, I chose not to do that. This is apparently plus 1.7. I'll know that for next time. I decided that, look, I'm going to play Prince board. I'm just going to develop. Stockfish thought, you know, should have just gone ahead. They developed the other knight. I now push that bishop. You know, potential pin, given that black will probably want to play um, e6 or e5 at some point. So they decide to give my bishop a bit of a chase. There we go. And of course, now we've gotten black to commit to those flank pawn moves. So if they were ever thinking of casting kingside, it's not really such a good idea anymore. They now immediately strike out with e5. And you can see Stockfish calls out a mistake, basically because there's two attackers, only one defender. I maybe too clever by half, decided to do something sneaky and move my bishop to attack the f7 pawn. Uh, you can see Stockfish says, don't do that, just take, and basically we're back to equality. But what I, what, I, what I was thinking of was to take, take, capture, and then I would have two attackers on the f, uh, f7 pawn. However, white can of course blunt that with just d6, a very natural move. Though consider black's development is a bit odd at the moment, and definitely not very Sicilianish. I now decide to push the queen again, lining up for an attack on that f7 pawn. Now that forced to move their queen. I now decide to develop that knight. Now that's a mistake actually, and black's a bit ahead. Uh, I straight up didn't see that that pawn was actually just hanging. That was a mistake on my part. However, they got a little bit spooked about that square, and so decided to play a6 to defend the b5 square. But consider all these pawn moves that black has been forced to make. I now decide to a long, uh, long castle. Stockfish sees a way for the queen to immediately infiltrate into b6. That would have been a good move, I think. Uh, they try to develop their bishop in this fairly cramped position. I now decide to uh, centralize my rook, also defending that pawn. Now you would have seen that uh, Stockfish thinks that um, there are two other moves which are best. So the human move is queen capture b7. Now I wasn't entirely sure I really like that because, you know, potentially I'm opening up that file. You know, there's, I could see some potential tactics there by black, but but apparently that was quite good. The absolutely mad engine line is this rook sacrifice. Rook captures pawn on d6. Well, let's have a look at this line because 
Uh, whoops, let's move back. Let's look at this line because it looks like that's straight up loss, right? It's straight up hanging, but let's see what happens. And this is why engines are absolutely terrifying. Queen now captures. Now we take that pawn. Of course, that's defended by the queen. King is now forced to move, so are stuck in the center. Now attacking the queen, they can move. Uh, here, pinning the bishop to the uh, pinning the bishop to the king. Queen now wants to have a trade. We now slip the knight into this position. Now double attacking that bishop. Queen obviously can't take because you know it'll be uh, we'll just take straight up, take back. So you know they're going to have to trade queens. Takes takes. Uh, bring that bishop all the way back. Um, that king, uh, that knight, has to do something because it's being attacked. But now we can capture that pawn. They capture back. Knight captures, and now there's another fork on the way. A third attacker onto uh, onto that bishop. Uh, you know they're forced to move their uh, move their. Uh, rook to also defend that square, and now bishop to e6. One, two, three, four attackers with that bishop pinned to the king. And you know, chess continues, but black is completely tied up in knots. This is an absolutely incredible engine line. I don't think anyone should uh, could have been, would have been able to find it. If they did, you wonder whether or not they were cheating, I think. So in this game, what did I end up doing? Uh, yep, here we go. So after bishop to d7, I centralized that rook also to defend my e4 pawn. Here they now strike out with their knight. You will see that that was a mistake. Um, and you know, there is a bit of a problem here, but I thought my next step will be to counterattack that knight. Now, Stockfish calls us, causes an inaccuracy. And the best move next for black is queen back to this position, x-ray defense of that knight, potential trade in queens, and you know, black gets to centralize uh, their other rook. However, I thought that black will opt to trade their knight for my bishop, and it's actually a trap. It's a trap! And they took the trap. That's a blunder. You see it getting worse and worse and worse? I can let you know that on high depth, this is plus 7.8. It's almost plus 8. And the reason for that is I can now almost force capture Black's Queen. Uh, I was really proud of myself because I actually calculated this in game. Basically, I capture back, and now I've got three attackers on that pawn. Uh, that is apparently the best move for black, but now knight captures the pawn with check. Black has only two legal moves here. Either they have to capture the, the knight, um, so get rid of the checking piece, but of course lose their queen, or they will can, have to move the king out of check. Let's see what happens when they move the king out of check. That's the only uh, one of two legal moves. Knight to f5, discovered check, attacking the queen. The queen can block the check, but it will be lost. Or the king will have to move out of the way, and it will be lost. So absolutely devastating. Now my, my opponent did calculate it, and they realized that Queen captures, losing the queen is probably best. So captures, 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 and he takes, uh, and they decide to short castle, trying to get the king out of there. Take again, and he, my opponent, opted to resign. Psychological damage, good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is to play the Smith Mora Gambit against the Sicilian. You will like it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.